Hey everybody and welcome to the first Sword Quarter video and today's video will be a belated response to one put out by Matt Easton in which he talks about using bucklers with two-handed weapons. Now in his video he mostly focused on the use of two shields at the same time on the two-handed weapon. Um, I'm going to mostly focus on the use of a single shield, mostly used in the lead hand. I did try a little bit with two shields on uh, one weapon, but uh, spoilers, it didn't work too well. <laughs> For the most part in that category, I really agree. However, I will touch on that aspect a little bit later in this video. Now, I found what is the main contributor towards whether or not this is going to work well is the shape of the shaft of the weapon that you are holding and the shape of the handle of the shield that you're using with said weapon. Um, so different weapons and different shield combos are going to interact with each other differently and thus kind of almost make or break this uh, combination. I tested this combo out with three main weapons. Uh, the Poleaxe, which you've been watching me twirl around like an idiot in the background there for a little bit. Um, the Spear and a Longsword. Now my Poleaxe has a rectangular shaft. It's rather robust as well, um, rather wide. Um, and this caused it to have some conflicts with the buckler when holding it, um, particularly for a rather powerful cut. So for example, if I held it in something like Wrathguard and tried to give it a nice big wallop, it gave some, it gave some issues. It was a little bit finicky. But in the end, I was able to get it done despite the finicky in this, and I got used to it as the time went on. I think if I shifted my technique a little bit, that would uh, change it even more, but that's I'll touch on that again later in the video. Now, a spear on the other hand, which is uh, quite short for a spear, admittedly, <laughs> sorry about that, but uh, that has a round and a bit thinner of a shaft than the mighty poleaxe does. Um, and because of that, it fit in the hand a little bit better with the buckler and didn't cause too much of an issue while moving it around. Overall, it was a lot less clumsy. I was able to perform cuts with it, despite it you know, being a spear. <laughs> um, but it also was able to slide on um, sliding thrusts a little bit easier. Now, unfortunately, I ran out of daylight when I was recording, so I never got any footage of me using the longsword, but nevertheless, I did mess around with it. Um, for the most part, though, I did arrive to very similar conclusions to Matt Easton. Um, for me personally, the buckler kind of locked into the guard, which locked my wrist into position, which caused a lot of angling to be very awkward for me. Now, I don't think this is going to be a universal issue, as the large portion of my issues arose because in a lot of my cuts and a lot of my maneuvering, I am very heavy on wrist rotation. But that's not true for everyone. Um, certain systems, um, for example, from what I understand of Indian martial arts, they have a bit of a tendency to focus on elbow rotation rather than wrist rotation. So if you're used to martial arts that might focus on elbow rotation and elbow angling rather than wrist rotation, this might not honestly apply to you and you may have no issues with this unlike me and Matt Easton. Now this brings me to the next major factor which affects whether or not this works well and that is how you're holding the weapon and buckler. Now from what I can tell in Matt Easton's video for the most part he held the buckler handle on top of the weapon shaft whereas I found that you could almost uh, slide the buckler handle into the crook in between your weapon shaft and your hand so that your buckler handle is parallel with the weapon shaft. Now this greatly depended upon the thickness of the shaft of course. So for example the poleaxe had some issues with it and that's why it kept slipping out and I ended up holding it again very similar to how I saw um, Matt Easton holding his in the video and that just caused it to kind of slip around and slide around and not be very secure. So depending on your weapon shaft size and of course your buckler handle size, your results will vary. 
Now, another big thing that affects this is also the positioning of your lead hand on the weapon, particularly with uh, pole arms. Now, I'm not great with terminology, admittedly, so I will simply call these grips the standard grip and the half sword grip, just for lack of a better term at the moment. Um, but I found that this greatly affected the usefulness of this and how it interacted with, uh, again, my wrist rotation and angling and things like that. Personally, I found the half sword grip to work a little bit better for me. Um, now, it did cut out a lot of good cutting potential, but it honestly made hooking with the shaft, parrying motions, and general thrusting a whole lot easier to do with the buckler, even with the chonky pole axe. Now this could be because when I use the half sword grip, I tend to focus on rigid structure and powerful thrusts, whereas when I use the more standard grip, I tend to focus on agility, speed, and, you know, more maneuverability, which I think could potentially tie into what I was saying about the elbow rotation rather than the wrist rotation. In order to have that rigid structure in the half sword grip, my uh, lead hand has to stay rigid on the shaft rather than rotating around otherwise I lose grip so it forces me to use elbow angling and rotation which I find a little bit easier to do so in the half sword grip rather than the more standard grip all in all I think it's definitely doable to use a buckler in your lead hand and definitely makes a decent amount of sense depending on the situation um, assuming your buckler is very cohesive with the size of the shaft of the weapon you're using. It can provide a decent amount of protection to that lead hand of yours, especially if you don't happen to have gauntlets on at the time. And that lead hand is going to be a huge target for your opponent, especially if you are a polearm user, when, uh, in which case your main defense is going to be the distance between you and your opponent, and in the middle is the shaft in your hands. As Matt said, I also agree that I think it's a lot easier to use with spears in general, mostly because a lot of times you are going to be thrusting with them, not necessarily delivering a whole lot of cuts. Um, and the main issues with the buckler arrive when you're trying to use it in a very cutting oriented way. But that's, you know, me personally, I use a lot of wrist rotation in my cuts. So that could vary depending on who you are. But I think for the most part, it does make a lot of sense to use with spears. Now, before I go, I'd like to bring up an interesting point that Skullagrim brought up um, in one of his videos. In between Matt's video and me finally getting around to editing this one, um, he released a video talking about a good sidearm for uh, travelers. And in it, he discussed both Zulu stick fighting and a certain type of Chinese buckler. Now, both of these shields are relatively small shields that are adequate protection for the hand. Um, however, both of them also feature um, relatively thin protrusions on either side of the rim. And the, uh, combined with these protrusions, it d recovers roughly from the shoulder to about the knees. And I think this is an interesting concept because it could be applied to the standard European buckler as well. Um, because most travelers um, in all kinds of cultures all around the world generally carried with them a some kind of walking stick. And I mean, that's even true today. You know, a lot of hikers to this day still carry a walking stick. And generally the walking stick will reach to uh, about the shoulder. And when held in the hand alongside the buckler, much how I was using it with these pole arms, it could then turn into a shield very similar to these these uh, Chinese buckler and the Zulu stick fighting shield. And this would afford the traveler a large amount of protection, not too uh, dissimilar from things like the uh, Roman scutum or the later uh, Norman kite shield, 
but they wouldn't be carrying around this large shield with them everywhere. It would just be contained to the very small buckler, which they could hold on their hip along with their whatever, you know, eating knife or all-purpose knife. And in their hands, they would just be carrying their normal walking stick. And I think this would be very comfortable for them. And it'd be a very interesting and useful combination. But on that note, I think I'll end my uh, ranting there. <laughs> Thanks for watching, folks, and have a good one.